In the last Engineering Plus video on the pros and cons of space travel, we concluded that, in terms of space travel capability, the railgun destroys the rocket easily in terms of cost efficiency. We went into the details and concluded that the rocket's $272 per pound of cargo decimated the Falcon 9's estimated cost of $2,975 a pound of space material. The utilization of railguns in space travel would not only bring the cost of sending the average male into space down from $500,000 to $40,000, but bring large-scale space colonization out of the realm of fiction and into the hands of the middle-class American or European or developed country member. Suffice to say, if we are talking practicality, railguns are by far the best option for space travel. If you want more information and entertainment, you should check the previous video for more specific details. However, the question remains, how do railguns work and how will they get this to space? A railgun consists of two parallel metal rails, hence the name, connected to an electrical power supply. When a conductive projectile or a non-conductive projectile with an armature, which can be a conductive metal or gas, is inserted perpendicularly between the rails, it completes a circuit. Electrons flow from the negative terminal end of the power supply up the negative rail, across the projectile or armature, and down the positive rail back to the power supply. But to understand the massive amount of propulsion railguns can create, you need to understand Ampere's law which states that for any closed loop path, the sum of length elements times the magnetic field in the direction of length element is equal to the permeability times the electric current enclosed in the loop. To make a very long story short, Ampere's law in simple words, extremely simple, cutting a lot of stuff out, means that if you put an electrical current through a wire, it will generate a magnetic field. The formula for the strength of the propulsive force in a railgun goes as follows, F equals IL times B, where F is the propulsive force, I is the current or the amount of energy flowing through the railgun, B is the constant or uniform strength of the magnetic field. To put that in perspective, the longer the railgun becomes, the more powerful the magnetic force becomes. In the same way, the more powerful the electrical current becomes, the more powerful the magnetic field. This current flowing through the railgun behaves as an electromagnet, creating a magnetic field inside of the loop formed by the length of the rails up to the position of the armature. In accordance with the right-hand rule, the magnetic field circulates around each conductor. Since the current is in the opposite direction of each rail, the net magnetic field between the rails, B, is directed at right angles to the plane formed by the central axes of the rails and the armature. In combination with the current I in the armature, this produces a Lorentz force, which accelerates the projectile along the rails, always out of the loop regardless of the supply of polarity, and away from the power supply. The Lorentz forces also act on the sides of the railgun, threatening to rip it apart. However, this can be avoided through sound structural engineering and carbon fiber plating. This covers the basics of railgun physics and further information on the formula and its derivations therein on railguns can be found in the paper. I will link in the description. However, two major lingering questions must be answered if this is to be applied to spaceflight like I am suggesting. Number one, how the heck are we going to power this absolutely massive railgun needed to fire payloads of massive cargo out of the atmosphere? And number two, for more fragile payloads of cargo such as humans, how the heck are they going to survive the monumental increases in acceleration inside of a railgun? If you had asked me this question some 50 years ago near the dawn of space travel, I would be struggling for an answer, almost dumbfounded. However, with recent advancements in capacitative and railgun technology for railguns and batteries, the tech is already there. As for electricity concerns, an article by the name of Review of Inductive Pulsed Power Generators for Railguns unsurprisingly gives a detailed explanation of how we can use inductive pulsed power generators for railguns. It explains how high-speed rotating electrical generators could supply the energy demands of large-scale railgun systems. The estimated values found in this article and the one included in the last video place the cost of generators at $500 million and the energy per shot required at 50 gigajoules per launch. 50 gigajoules at the generator cost of $0.08 cents a kilowatt hour would be around $1,100. This would be an almost insignificant cost compared to the other ones at this price. 
For the other factor of sudden acceleration's damage to the human body, current plans for a space targeting railgun feature a prodigious length in the design. Similar to how the Hyperloop designed by Elon Musk can rocket humans at insane velocities without damage to their bodies in a vacuum, the railgun will feature a similar feat positioned up a mountainside or areas close to the equator, far from population centers. There is one final question that has most likely been burning within you for the duration of this video. Why hasn't NASA already thought of this? Or why hasn't it been done before? Why hasn't NASA or Elon Musk committed to this technology before? And why are you some genius video creator out there who has suddenly put all the pieces together? Well, while I appreciate the compliment, NASA has already delved into this field and determined it a viable method of space travel. The reason for this is because the NASA budget is too small for resources to be dedicated for more risky measures like the railgun. This is also one of the main reasons SpaceX is so far ahead of NASA. However, it's not too late for you to make your own company and get in the game yourself with the, this informational advantage. If there are any major errors in this video, let me know so I can correct them in annotations over the content. To see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and keep liking to keep the content coming. I love making videos for you guys and the next one is going to be a fascinating list on excellent ways to get to space.